the advertising for that brand mm. belongs to the people also. Brands belong to the people. Brands belong to people. And today people have great influence on brands. Mm. And, you know, if all of a sudden you make a change, mm. you do get the comments, you know, this is my brand, what have you done to my brand? Mm. You can't do that. What about Vietnamese consumers? Do they take ownership of the brands? Probably not at the level mm. that we've seen in the West. In terms of communication, is Vietnamese as a language um, very, very important to be used, or do you think English can be used? Absolutely Vietnamese. <laughs> Absolutely Vietnamese. No, 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 no. English is a waste of time. In, in truth, um, you know, okay, we are lucky in Vietnam that we have a very high proportion of people who mm. speak English, which is fantastic. Mm. But, you know, in truth, in communicating to the Vietnamese, you've really got to talk to them in Vietnamese. Even the young consumers of Vietnam? Exactly right, exactly right. Mm. That's the mother tongue. That's the language mm. with which they're, they're comfortable. Mm. And if you want to personalise a brand, if you want to say, this is my brand, well, the way to personalise the brand is to present the brand in Vietnamese, not, not in English. Two years ago, David, I wrote a book in Vietnamese, though not in English, yeah. um, called um, Advertising in Vietnam, an insider's point of view. Mm. And I did mention that a lot of the advertisers at, at that particular time um, used foreign institutions or um, some foreign talent to endorse the brands. Mm. And that sort of create a lot of trust um, within the lo local consumers. What is your point of view on that? I think probably a couple of years ago, it may have been necessary to do that. I don't think that is the case now because I think the, uh, the Vietnamese consumer is more savvy, mm. right? Because I think what's happened now is that there is, there's more choice. Mm. And, uh, you know, I think that Vietnamese people are, as I said, they're more aware and they're more confident mm. in the decisions that they're going to make. And I think the other issue is that they've now been exposed to more. And so they're now in a much better position to be able to make decisions about what they believe is right for them and right for their family. What you're saying is that their knowledge and understanding of uh, product attributes have actually raised... Correct. You know, I spend a lot of time in supermarkets and I watch them. They read packs. They read packs. Let's talk about what works and what doesn't, doesn't work in Vietnam in mm. terms of creativity. Without touching base on the consumer target, what are the general guidelines do you think for what works and what doesn't work in yeah. terms of creativity yeah. here? First of all, you've got to have a creative hook. And you know, certainly it's more effective if, if in fact your brand can be integrated mm. Mm, as, as part of that idea. Mm. People need to be involved in the story. Mm. I think that people, people need to feel that the story you're telling is a credible story. Right, And obviously people, they like to be entertained. And again, it has to be very simple and it's got to be very, very clear and it's got to be very single-minded in terms of what it is that you're saying. So it's only you know, one thing. That's what it's all about. And mm. You look at the ads, there's too much in there. Mm. The most effective ads are the ads that have got one story, mm. that have got a creative hook, and they tell it in an interesting, entertaining manner. Mm. And that's the stuff that works really well. And mm. so long as the product mm. is integrated into the story, mm. and you don't have the product, which is a bolt-on at the end, mm. and so it could be an ad for anybody, mm. and over a period of time, what you've got to do is you've got to build up brand cues within the story mm. so that you know, so that you are referring back to the brand all the time and so that the people understand during the story who the brand is coming, who the story is coming from. And always flash back to the brand. There is some tonality about the brand, there is mm. some character mm. about the brand, mm. right? And you've got to make sure that whatever it is that you do reflects mm. the character and tells the, helps to tell the story in an And that works for way. all target consumers. Absolutely. Doesn't Absolutely. matter you're all young. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I, um, when I talked to um, the Nielsen company on the last show, I actually talked about the young generation of Vietnam as in the 18 to 22 or 23 to 30 as a very much a trapped generation because they are trapped in between the past and the present, the traditional values and their expression of freedom and individuality. Um, do you think that's the case? I would say that the, um, the 20 to... 25s mm. are probably trapped mm. in the tradition. Mm. I think they're probably going to be the last generation mm. who are trapped there because when you see the generation that's coming through, mm. these are people who want more freedom mm. and who are demanding more freedom. They came through, you know, the changed Vietnam. 
live in a world where all of their values are changing so rapidly they're not sure where they are and so the world is spinning around these guys and you know the, the most confused people are the males they just don't know the older males don't know where they are because all of the sort of the traditional values that they came up to expect have gone Let's talk about the media landscape of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that Vietnam has a very fragmented media landscape mm -hmm. and TV is king with about 100% penetration. Correct, correct. And then you've got print followed that. Correct, correct. Um, what are the other channels, um, media channels, do you think that can be used in Vietnam? Well, you know, certainly you've got the traditional ones. So you've mm -hmm. got, you have television, you've mm -hmm. got, you've got, um, you've got print mm. we've seen a diversification mm. of print in magazines mm. you know so, so when i came here 10 years ago there were a limited number of magazines today mm. we've got a zillion lifestyle magazines we see radio trying to resurrect itself mm -hmm. we see outdoor mm. we see outdoor but the other thing we're seeing is obviously we're seeing a lot of event activity and a lot of activation mm. so we we're seeing a lot of a lot of uh, client companies mm. taking to the streets and building a one-on-one -on -one relationship mm. with um, with their customers. Mm. And you know, if in fact you look at globally what's happened, globally what's happened, there has been a shift of dollars mm. to what we call BTL mm. below the line, trying to have a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship mm. with the consumer. Now I understand that TV is king in Vietnam, and mm. every big advertiser. Was Ad advertisers would want to be on TV. That creates a lot of cl clutters for, mm -hmm. for TV. So how would you advise your client in terms of cutting through to the clutters? Well, it comes uh, uh, to be brave, <laughs> first of all, to be brave. Because as I said to you, if you look at a lot of advertising in yeah. Vietnam, yeah. there is a lot of sameness. There are, there are lots of smiling families. And, you know, there are lots of sort of slurping of noodles and a lot of you know, cuddling of children. I think there's a figure of something like 65, 70 percent mm. of ads. Mm. Uh, the money's being wasted. The money's being wasted. It makes it, absolutely no effect. Exactly right, because, you know, the stories are not being told as mm. focused as they can. Mm. Breaking through the clutter is still all to do with the idea. Mm. But the idea is very It's important. all about the idea. Mm. It's all about the idea. You cut through with the quality of the idea. You surprise people. You involve people. You amaze people. You stop them. That's what it's all about. Unless advertising stops you, well, then the money's been wasted. Have you ever presented a brave idea that's rejected by a client? Of course. <laughs> advertising agencies have drawers full of, of brave ideas that what have been... What do you do then? Uh, what do you do? Well, you know, you get disappointed and then you go back and you, you pause, you have a good night's sleep and then you come home and you start again. You go, OK, let's look at it again. But, but no agency will give up on the idea of tr give up on trying to have an idea. Let's talk a little bit about the cost issue um, and, and can you just give us a, a perspective on how much it costs for a TV commercial 30 seconds on a prime time in Vietnam? Well, that's 2,000 US. 2,000 US 2000 for a spot. US. And what about a, a full page, four color brand Well, that's magazine? between, depending where you put it, mm -hmm. that's between 1,500 and 2,000. Mm. Let's touch base on um, advertising policies in Vietnam and I think mm -hmm. a lot of people are very interested in this area. Um, I was told that um, the policy is quite tight, so mm -hmm. no cigarettes, no liquor, no sex, no violence, mm -hmm. no national images and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that creates a lot of um, limitation for you in terms of creativity? In truth, no. Not at all? No, in truth, no. no. What about mm -hmm. censorship? Uh, well, censorship is an issue, mm. okay? Everything is, uh, and I think that's good for the Vietnamese people. Mm. You know, every communication is censored, mm. okay? So therefore, you know, uh, commercials, mm. Would, were, are self-censored by, by television stations mm. and when you deal with this television station you get one point of view from A mm. and you can dif get a different point of view from B mm. so that can be a bit of a problem mm. you know, so somehow you've got to manage that you know, certainly with all print advertising you know, the publishers they, they will have final say as to whether they believe that it's right, wrong, suitable for their publication mm. suitable within the guidelines they manage on behalf of mm. the authorities mm. uh, the one that, that the toughest of course is MOH with the Ministry of Health. Yeah. And in truth, I think that's fair. Mm -hmm. 
and you know that is all to do with you know looking after the health of Vietnamese people. So how long does it take for a, an ad to be cleared through censorship? You, normally you've got to allow a couple of weeks, right? Normally you've got to allow a for the television and the print guys. Normally if you get an appointment, you can go down and see them and normally if it's television production, we will see them uh, on a couple of occasions. When we get an idea, they might give you some guidance on it, but they're not approving anything and they're not approving anything else they see a complete commercial. Uh, the Ministry of Health is completely different. That takes the time it takes. Hmm. Last question, David. Yeah. Yeah. If there is one message that you would like to send to a new advertiser coming to Vietnam, what yeah. would that be? Yeah. Yeah. Vietnam is a very, very dynamic and exciting market, mm. I would say that. You really need to look through the excitement or behind the excitement mm. of Ho Chi Minh in Hanoi mm. because Vietnam is in fact the 70% 70, the 70 of people who don't live in Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi and who live in the, prov in the provinces and in truth the long-term opportunity lies with these people. So therefore I would say to anyone who's thinking about coming here you've really got to understand what's happening within the rural area, right? You've got to understand you know what it is that I've got do I really believe that for the bulk of the people and that's where they are this is right and then how do I get to them? So that would be my comment. That's a very interesting message, and I think people <laughs> will appreciate it. Well, so, thank you very much, David, for being on the show with us today. Thank you. I certainly hope that I have found it interesting, and I, hope, I certainly hope that those who watch this program in some way benefit from the discussion we've had. So thank you for including me. Will be. Thanks a lot. Good on you. Vietnam can be a very tricky market in terms of advertising and media. If not enough attention is paid on harnessing consumer insights as a foundation for creativity and choice of communication channels, it is also a market where sensitivity is high and censorship plays a major role in whether your investment in creativity and production pays off. Come with an open mind and work with a set of boundaries with the help of a consultancy company for an ad agency. Let us thank David for providing us such insights into the advertising and media landscape of Vietnam. If you have questions for this topic, please feel free to send them to fee at insightvietnam.com.vn. For past episodes and show updates, please visit Insight Vietnam on WordPress, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. My name is Fee Nguyen, and I'm your host on Insight Vietnam. Until next time, keep Vietnam close to your heart.